been just over 24 hours since former President Jimmy Carter went into hospice care. Americans across the nation are wishing him well in the final stages of his life. That's where we're starting News 19 tonight. I'm Zoe Henry and for Kaylin Hagwood. The former president's charity announced yesterday the 98 year old would no longer go forward with medical treatment. Carter says that he wants to be with family for the remainder of his life. Just hours ago, President Biden sent Mr. Carter well wishes on social media, saying he admires the former president for his strength and humility during tough times. Carter's hometown community in Georgia spent the morning in prayer as the former president is on hospice at his home there. At Mr. Carter's church, worshipers took time to honor the former president's long life during the Sunday service. Lord, we'd be amiss this morning if we did not lift President Carter to you. Lord, we pray that you be with his family, Lord, those around him. And God, we thank you for his service to this nation. Jimmy Carter is the longest living American president. He spent more than four decades after his term serving his hometown community of Plains, Georgia. Here at home, longtime Midlands residents are reflecting on Jimmy Carter's political career. Before becoming president, Mr. Carter was a governor in Georgia and visited South Carolina multiple times, including a trip to the capital city nearly 45 years ago. Our Nate Stanley reports the former president's connection to our state has a lasting legacy. I don't think anyone would dispute that Jimmy Carter will certainly go down in history as the greatest former president this country's ever had. Dwight Drake looks back fondly on meeting and working with former President Jimmy Carter. Drake, now a lawyer at Nelson Mullins Riley in Scarborough, was once a part of South Carolina Governor John West's legal counsel. He describes the relationship between West and Carter. And they became exceptionally close. And Carter, while he was governor, was in this state a great deal. I remember several occasions that I was involved in uh, when President Carter was here meeting with Governor West and others. He explains one of those projects was President Carter's Urban Development Action Grant Program that Drake says was pivotal to the growth of the capital city in the late 1970s. It led to the, to the building, uh, caused the building that is now the uh, hotel on Main Street. The other th portion of that grant uh, really helped develop the Vista. I mean, the, develop, the, the Vista could never have developed, but for Carter having awarded that UDAG grant, West and Carter continued to have a strong relationship, Carter even appointing West as the ambassador to Saudi Arabia during his presidency. Drake says looking back, there's a lot of lessons that can be taken away from Carter's legacy, the biggest of which, how we can all work together. Listening and understanding the viewpoints of people who have different opinions, uh, not, not to try to be the loudest voice in the room all the time, uh, have civilized uh, intercourse and interchange and debate. In Columbia, Nate Stanley, News 19, WLTX. As we speak of Mr. Carter's legacy, it's the pieces outside of politics that bring us to the news of his condition today. Nearly eight years ago, the former president was diagnosed with melanoma, a serious form of skin cancer. He was 91 years old at the time. A few months later, he started getting treatments and eventually beat his battle with the disease. In 2019, Carter took a serious head injury after falling at home that caused his brain to bleed. He was out of the hospital a month later, but kept getting medical care until choosing to stop following yesterday's announcement. Now at home, Jimmy Carter leaves a long and full legacy behind him, especially in his four years at the White House. He served as the nation's 90, 39th president after beating Gerald Ford in the 1976 election. While in office, the White House says some of Mr. Carter's accomplishments include creating the Department of Education, enhancing the Social Security system, and appointing record numbers of women and minorities to government jobs. Carter served only one term as president, losing to Ronald Reagan in 1980.